Hey everyone, Shark here. Fresh off the launch of patch 1.8, I've got a challenger 1v1 for you on the map Road to Tunis. Playing as the Axis, we have Hangover 100% from Spain, rank number 41 with the Wehrmacht using the Breakthrough Battle Group. And then playing as allies, we have Odung from South Korea, rank number 17 with the Brits using the Heavy Armor Battle Group. Both of these players have an extensive match history with their respective factions in 1v1, so I think this is a good match to demonstrate how the style of play for each faction has shifted with the 1.8 patch. Before the patch, Wehrmacht had a slight edge over UK and 1v1 just based on win rate. Have the changes here been enough to level the playing field? With that in mind, let's get to the match. Alright, so we got Hangover here in blue on the south side of the map, right side of the screen. Uh, getting a Pioneer out in his tier 1. And then we've got Odung uh, getting his tier 1 as well, getting a second Sapper. He's in red here on the north side of the map, uh, left side default view. Hangover going immediately for a Grenadier. Uh, so, I think Road to Tuna is pretty pretty classic map. This is a map that, uh, with all the light vehicles, um, you could get swarmed on really quickly. So, taking a look at how the changes here affect that. Hangover is going to go for Grenz. He's going to choose Blitzkrieg. Uh, and unlock the MP40 assault package right away. So it looks like that's going to be his answer for early mobility. Um, although, with kind of the open sight lines on this map against Brit infantry, that could be kind of dangerous. Uh, we'll see. Odung's getting his first infantry section out as well. No, I don't think there are any significant changes made to this map. Um... It's it's pretty, you know, it's a relatively symmetrical map. Uh, plays pretty consistently. Um, kind of every time, regardless of what side you start on. So I doubt they would make any real major changes to Road to Tunis. Uh, as opposed to some of the other maps like uh, Pacino Stimulate, which is a good idea, but they had to relocate the fuels just because it was really, really too easy to force off your opponent's fuel income completely. We're going to see a second Grenadier squad here from Hangover. Both sides kind of just capping up the flanks. No meeting engagements yet. Um, pretty conservative capping order. Uh, no over aggression here. Second infantry section on the way out for Odung. The Sapper is building sandbags as they cap this VP. This is where we might see the first engagement, but the Grens are going to bypass them. Pioneers coming out. Now Sapper's got their uh you know close range damage range extended yeah now two gren squads engaging at range and that's exactly how you want to deal with these sappers they drop a model and the sappers forced to retreat infantry sections in the center uh instead of kind of converging on these grens they're going to grab this garrison and counter cap here Pioneers look like they're going to try to use a sight blocker, not realizing there's a second a section there. So Pioneers forced to back up. But now Hangover, third Grenadier squad coming out, and he's going to start to con or basically continue to cap up the east side of the map. And now he's getting his tier one officers' quarters. So these Grens are going to scale a little bit better. And he'll immediately get access to that healing. A uh, recce package upgrade on one of these infantry sections from Odung. So he's starting to chip away. Sappers close in now, so Pioneer's forced to retreat. So, so far we've seen a lot of posturing, a lot of maneuvering for a single kill uh, on each side of the map. Um, play right now, like, very kind of respectful and deliberate. Like, hey, let's get let's get Savage, guys. Let's pick this up. Uh, I want to see, I want to see <laughs> Haymakers thrown almost immediately. So hopefully we get there. Don't forget Here we go. A couple of Gren squads advancing through the center. Right, they're going to relocate into cover, dropping one of the Brit infantry models. And this infantry section is going to move over to try to deal with these pioneers. The Grens are going to pursue. Opportunity here to pick up a couple of early infantry sections. Uh, or infantry models, I guess. Now a fourth grand squad coming out for hangover while Odo and getting his uh his tier two out. They drop another model. Here comes the, the recce section out. Uh, immediately snipe the pioneer. Grens are gonna respond here. They gotta stay outside of the machine gun arc. But this volley fire should do a fair amount of damage. 
Only now one grand squad in the center pops the MP40s, so they're in a good position to challenge these sappers. And now with the other two grand squads on flank, yep, sappers forced to retreat. You see Odong wisely counter capping on the opposite side of the map, holding onto this garrison. He upgrades a second uh, section with the recce upgrade. I think maybe that's his concern about a potentially MG42 and having the ability to call in some artillery. Uh, Gren's trading very well at range with the infantry sections. And looks like we're going to see Luftwaffe company from Hangover. Pioneers of the Flamethrower show up, so the infantry section forced to abandon this garrison. Now three infantry sections. They got to drop models here, otherwise the healing on these Gren's is going to make this an inefficient engagement. There we go. We'll drop a couple. One infantry section at risk of going down on retreat. Now they'll both kind of back away here. And Odong immediately on the back foot. He's done a good job again counter capping in the southwest corner of the map. But the four Gren squads are putting a lot of pressure on and dropping a lot of early models. And especially with the tier one officers quarters for the Wehrmacht and all the healing that you get with the Grenadiers, you have to be very deliberate about your early engagements. Here we go. Humber hitting the field for Odung. Now, uh, in the, the patch notes, this is basically designed to be a specific, like a sniper killer. It's going to eat a Panzerfaust here. Um, does a lot of health damage, but doesn't really drop many models. So these Grenadiers are going to hop into cover. Sapper's coming up to repair the Humber. Another Gren squad tries to sneak in for the Panzerfaust, but is going to get pushed away here. And so Odung, yeah, I was going to say, he really needs healing. So he's inve investing into his field infirmary now. He's got the Humber on the field. Um, but now, Hangover, he's got his Luftwaffe company. And so we could see a 2-2-1. Um, we could see Jaegers with Shreks. And here comes a squad of Jaegers out now. And I think the advantage now is you know Light Eagles are just a little slower to hit the field. They're a little more expensive. So you don't have to worry about, like, seven Humbers showing up immediately. There we go. These uh, Grens kind of trying to build sandbags sandwiched in take a lot of initial damage. Sapper's pushing. Ooh. Gren squad down to just a handful of health. The Humber doesn't want to necessarily pursue though because of the risk of the Panzerfaust. So it's going to stay and kite these assault grenadiers. Yeah. This is not a good engagement for the Sappers because remember, uh, only three models had MP40s. The other three still have Car 98. So these upgraded Gren squads still do decent damage at range as long as they're full health. Now the MP40s are the priority, so now. You know, no car 98s on this this squad, but a second squad of Grands here as well as Pyos. And the Humber's just going to continue to kite. Odung continuing to counter cap. And it looks like he's going to go for his infantry training, so he needs his infantry to scale as well. Here comes a good push by the infantry section. Now the Humber on retreat has a chance to do a lot more damage. The infantry sections aren't going to pursue, in fact, they're going to shift over to the center. While the sappers cap this VP. So I think you see Odung recognizing that at least early on, Hangover had a much better ability to spread out the map. And now he's trying to kind of make up for that early game resource advantage. Uh, Squatty Jaegers hits the field. Uh, and upgraded with the Panzer Shrek already. So you can see that's where the, uh, the munition sink is going to be for Hangover. Odung's going to counter with yet another infantry section. So he's he clearly saw the Jaegers, right? They they took some damage, so he knows he's up against Luftwaffe Company, which means, in my mind, he's not as worried about vehicles. The verbal win now is 70 uh, fuel. So if he sees a 2-2-1, he's probably okay with the risk there between the Humber uh, and the infantry sections being able to manage that. But he doesn't have to worry about heavier vehicles for at least a minute. So um, I, I think he's taking his time building up infantry force to deal with these Grenadiers. Over time, these infantry sections are just going to scale much better than the Gren squads will, even with MP40 upgrade. Ooh, good mine. Knocks down a couple Pioneer models. Breakthrough Tactics activated to try to help uh, Hangover kind of retake some of these points here over on the west side of the map 
Meanwhile, the Humber continuing to try to kite at these Grenadiers, but here comes the infantry section blob, the platoon, if you will. Coming across, trying to hold on to his fuel. Now a, a Pinsir Shrek over here to, to threaten the Humber. But this Brit infantry just volley firing. Now really starting to burn down some of these Wehrmacht models. Now one Grenadier left is finally going to retreat on the flank. Uh, and it looks like Odung mass combat power at the right time. Another squad of Jaegers hit the field. And now he's going for support elements, so it looks like we are going to see Werberwinds here. Now, yeah, these great infantry focusing on the MP40 Grens, but remember, they, they maintain their close range DPS. Fortunately, they retreat, so Odung's infantry are going to be able to hold it. Now, this Jaeger squad getting the uh, G43 upgrades rather than the Shrek. So they'll do even better damage at range. Um, Jaegers, no real changes in this patch, but in the previous patch, they did get a DPS up upgrade, and they, so they're still very strong. I just wonder how they're going to do against this many infantry. Oh yeah, Sappers wisely retreat. And as I say that, Jaeger is doing a little bit of damage, but the infantry section is basically non plus just moving away. Meanwhile, the triple infantry section immediately burning down this one Jaeger squad with the Shrek. So the Humber uh, looks pretty safe there. Now, Odon going for the heavy armor battle group. Um, he hasn't really done much with his CPs yet, though, besides the Sapper upgrade. Small engagement here. Yeah, the infantry section it just didn't have the health to deal with that, and then especially as some pioneers show up. Now here comes the grenadier blob. Now with the grens, they can just either heal or merge with this Jaeger slide. Infantry section here kind of staying in the center of the map. And again, they gotta be careful they don't just take a bunch of damage and lose several models. Now this is starting to look like a more even engagement. Humber on the flank continuing to kite. Hangover going for the Werble win now. And Odung with only a single six pounder on the field. He got a Vickers as well to try to handle this Wehrmacht infantry. And he's going for his tier four as the Werble win hits the field. The AT gun is set up in the center. There you go. The Vickers suppresses. Now we're about to see what the Werble can do. Supported by the Jaegers here. The Warble should do fairly well against the Humbers. Well, Vickers forced to retreat immediately. Odung building a second six pounder. On the flank here, Pioneers get caught out trying to counter cap and forced to retreat. Six pounder refaces, but won't get a shot off. Werbelwind's going to back up. So lots of infantry support here. Gren's healing the Jaegers. And so if the infantry can keep. The uh, team weapons cleared, then this Werble can do a lot of damage. Wow, that infantry section was really low. On the opposite side of the map here, Humber continuing to kite Grenadiers, supported by Sappers. Man, despite the buff, Sappers look like they're just not doing as much damage as you'd think. Jaegers force off the infantry section. So Hangover. Converting this Werble's arrival into a fair amount of uh, map control here. Second AT gun hits the field for Odong. He's got them platooned up together in the center, which makes sense. Ooh, Jaeger's taking a lot of damage from this Humber. Infantry section and Vickers coming out. They're going to retreat, but that's an awkward retreat path if the Humber chases, which I guess it looks like it won't. Zappers here in the center, but two AT guns. The Werble doesn't want to pursue too much. AT guns don't really react, though. Instead, Odung microwing on the flank here, trying to regain control of his fuel. Now, Hangover's got enough for a second Werble. 
But it looks like he's going to wait for his tier 4 instead. That's enemy infantry. Keep them back. Ooh. Humber and infantry doing a lot of damage to this grand squad. Infantry section on the opposite end forced to retreat. Now here comes the Werble. Two AT guns moving in on the flank here. And if this Werble's not careful, it could get snared and knocked down pretty quick. Grenadiers apply pressure to the six pounders, so the six pounders don't get a shot off. Humber forces away the grenadiers of the assault package. Combined with uh, the infantry section pressure here. But the Werble, they don't even get a shot off from the Werble. So good play here from Hangover. Alright, and now we see we see tier 4 coming out for Odung. Another Jaeger squad on the way as well. He's got a, floating a ton of fuel. This Grenadier squad here taking a bunch of damage from the Vickers. Oh, here come the Jaegers with the Shrek. Humber relocates and is going to get away. Ooh. Another squad of Jaegers on the way. I imagine because he lacks any other hard AT, those will be another Shrek squad. Here's the Werble. Pushing away his infantry section. He's got enough support from these Jaegers that he can apply some pressure to the AT guns if they shoot. And the Jaegers, good sight range. They're going to see the six pounders. So the Werble wins able to back away. And Odung just being kind of forced onto his heels here. Infantry sections on the way out. But now another Jaeger squad coming up to support. And here comes a Werble end. Now, the first salvo of six pounder shots come in. Werble takes a little bit of damage. And now Hangover's got the VP advantage now as well, and with this Grenadier squad is about to get the triple cap on. So Odung now firmly on the back foot, and I think Hangover smells the blood in the water, and he has another Werbel in hitting the field. The rapid production from the Blitzkrieg battle group, uh, man, just super effective at getting vehicles out so fast. Like, no point for even a call-in at this point. It's basically the same. Meanwhile, looks like we are going to see... A Matilda here from Odung, which honestly is a good counter. Not too many heavy vehicles. Oh, this Grenadier squad is at risk of going down here. Vickers does a lot of damage. Yeah, oh, they're done. Right, well, good pick up there for Odung. Uh, looks like Hangover was microing somewhere else here. This infantry section itself is at a little bit of risk for to retreat. And now Sappers with Flamethrower. Oh, the Jaegers get out just in time. The Werbles come into support, and now they're about to find the Matilda. Which, of course, whips its first shot. And so, the funny thing is that second or the third Jaeger squad that was produced was a second Recce or G43 package, not a Shrek uh, upgrade. So, a Hangover suddenly finding himself really unprepared to deal with this Matilda. So, I think... You know, he needs to keep the infantry away so he doesn't bleed too much, but the Matilda's going to chase this Werble Wind. Meanwhile, opposite side of the map, infantry sections attempting to deal with Grenadiers using the breakthrough ability to cap very quickly. I'm sorry, it's the breakthrough battle group, not the blistering battle group. You guys all know what I mean. Here comes a big push through the center. Smoking the Vickers. Sappers drop a bunch of models. Now they're going to go back after this Vickers. Matilda relocating to center, AT guns kind of on the flank. I think he wants to try to combine those two to knock out one of the, the Werble wins here. Oof. Vickers takes a ton of damage even on retreat. Oh, a single Grenadier model left. And the Recce, the Recce section gets the pickup. So Hangover really doing really well on map control, really well on resources, but losing a couple of Grand Squads unnecessarily here. And so it almost looks to me like he's not going to go for the tier four, that he is going to basically wait for the command points to get the Tiger out and use that as his heavy AT. 
Another squad of Jaegers on the way. And this may be, even though there's no change in the patch, this just may be a recognition of uh, kind of the strength of the Jaegers in general. Um, you're going to see more and more of them. They scale, obviously, much better than the Grenadiers do. And here, now we're going to see the Recon Artillery. Uh, the Warbler one's going to be able to knock down that airplane relatively quickly, and there's nothing really in that, so... Uh, not going to see much benefit from the Recon Artillery here. Recon Artillery is really good at dealing with uh, team weapons as they're more static. Now here we're testing the new flamethrower mechanic. Wow, and a lot of damage, but no models drop. But here comes the Matilda, and it's uh, AoE damage reduction. Yeah, and so we're seeing it's just not doing nearly as much. There we go, two more Grenadiers drop. And now there's a second squad of uh, Jaegers with Strax on the field. The Warbleen's going to push on the Matilda. Not going to do much to the Matilda, but the Matilda also not really going to hard counter the, the Warbles either. They really need the six pounders to show up, but they are at risk of getting overrun by these Jaegers. But Odong has done a good job of counter capping VPs and getting pressure to go back the other way. Oh. Wow, first off, the sapper is at risk of getting burned down on retreat. Now, with these Shreks coming in, plus the Grenadiers, Faust, oh, the sappers are done. As the Matilda pops smoke to save itself, it dooms the sappers to extinction. Infantry sections pushing in. Matilda forced to continue to back up. Now, here come the six pounders. Oh, good salvo on one of the Warbleins. One infantry section at the risk of going down. Oh, that's Brit Recon Artillery coming in to try to deal with this mass of Jaegers. Now here comes the Matilda on the way back out, trying to apply pressure as the Jaegers retreat. Well, one infantry section force off. The Jaegers finally forced to retreat as well. Vicker is in a good position. Now Hangover able to make really good use of that pressure to counter cap but it looks like odong is going to move out of his base here uh matilda's still in need of some repairs he must have done the withdraw and refit with the humber well probably a while ago and i just failed to notice it my bad everyone uh now hangover's got enough fuel for the tiger uh, what he really needs is the command points and a little bit of manpower. Meanwhile, Odung... He's got a decent amount of fuel here. I wonder if he's going to continue to go with Matildas or potentially upgrade to something like Grant's. The, the double gun on the Grant, if you start to get a couple of them, man, it really does a good job countering these massed infantry and imposing some bleed. Hangover not really feeling the bleed right now. Obviously, he's floating quite a bit of manpower, even with eight infantry squads on the field. Tactical advantage. We must make a stand. Now, Odong has finally flipped the VPs back in his favor. He has a brief triple cap. Is going to get disabled once the Pioneer hits this. And he's got his six pounders kind of clumped up here. I'd be really worried keeping them this close together about them potentially getting just overrun uh, by these two Wurbles. Oh, uh, five infantry sections on the field, all with the recce package. Uh, but that's a lot of utility and a lot of anti-infantry pressure. And so, while this is a little slow, this is the downside of kind of nerfing like vehicles like this, is now the, the default answer to lots of infantry is more infantry. It's, it's just going to be a little bit of a shift in the meta, I think, for the foreseeable future. As the mid-game vehicles are less viable, uh, and people are gonna go, yeah, here we go, here we see the Grant, um, are gonna play infantry heavy into late game vehicles, and the mid, mid game vehicles are gonna be just less effective and less used. Here we go, big push in the center here with the Matilda, combined with the Recce Arty. Now this is good, because now the Warbleins have to decide, do they shoot at the airplanes or do they shoot at the infantry? A couple of Jaeger squads in a good spot to do some damage. 
Already coming in. Wow, this is a large engagement. Pioneers take a lot of damage from the artillery. Jaeger, one squad of Jaeger's forced off. Now, out of the circle, Lorbelin's able to focus on knocking out the Recchiardi plane, so that ability is disabled. But now here come the six pounders. Oh, now this is risky for Hangover. If he gets cut, uh, cut off here on retreat with the six pounders on the flank, he could end up getting totally blown up before he can get out. Here comes uh, the Jaeger Shrek squad, uh, but a Grant now also on the field. Now he's using the breakthrough ability, but just to grab that VP is not going to be that effective. Here's the Matilda and the Grant. Now, now it Hangover just now gets his Tiger out. So we'll see if Odung's ready for this. He was ready for the Werbles. He was able to push off the infantry. Uh, his six pounder slightly out of position here. But while he's doing that, really impressive, able to counter cap the opposite side of the map. So he'll get the triple cap on here. Good manpower bleed across the board. Now here's the tiger. But you don't want to send the tiger out to try to deal with this on its own. Two six pounders, a Matilda, and a Grant. There's a little bit of risk there in the tiger just being overwhelmed, especially with all the infantry on the field for support. Now, Matilda and the Grant relocating to the east side of the map, and the Tiger's going to chase, and it's on prioritized vehicles here. This is, this is kind of interesting and in just seeing how you think both sides lacking some information. You got six pounders in the rear. Here we go. So they find the mine, Grant knocks it out. Tiger is going to pursue the Grant and the Matilda with support from one of the Wobos. Whiffs its first shot. And meanwhile, a big push coming in with infantry and a whirlwind on the west side of the map that are now converting, converging in the middle. Tiger is going to use attack ground through smoke, continue to damage the Matilda. Oh, Matilda's one shot. One more hit. The Tiger's still looking for it. There, it finally sees the Matilda. So Matilda picked up, but now infantry section clumped up on the Tiger with the Grant and the support. AT guns on the flank. Can they snare? Yup, we're going to see engine for the Tiger here. Tiger has already taken a bunch of damage. Now here come the six pounders and the Grant. Whirlwind in support, but if the Grant continues to get these rear hits, the Tiger may go down. Oh, the Tiger is knocked out. Isolated Tiger. Meanwhile, Whirlwind smashing this Vickers here in the center, even as it keeps... Oh, triple hit Vickers goes down to the Whirlwind. Oh, Grant catches another Whirlwind, but now here's this big infantry push here in the center. And honestly, that's a good trade overall for for Odung, right? Losing the Matilda, but getting a Werble and a Tiger in the process. Now he's just got to manage the infantry fight. There's a solid three minutes before the Tiger will be able to come out again. Uh, assuming that Hangover gets the fuel, which uh, I think he probably will. Um, and now here comes the infantry section. The question is... Can they impose enough bleed to keep the tiger off, to extend the amount of time the tiger's off the field and maintain pressure on VPs? That triple cap was pretty painful. Hanging over back in possession of two of the VPs, but he, he got ticked down quite a bit. And so, in waiting to get another tiger on the field, if he can't maintain enough pressure, Odin could potentially close this game out. And it looks like. They're going to use the six pounders to knock out this building, prevent this garrison from being used, which I like because I feel like the garrison is way more useful to the Jaegers with Shreks than it is any of the British infantry. The enemy has cut us off. We have 
Warble Wind forces away infantry section, but not before Odon grabs his VP uh, and his fuel point back. And it looks like Hangover is going to make another push here through the west side. Gren squad, a couple of Jaegers. Countercapping on the opposite side of the map. The Grens and the Jaegers need to link up so they can heal. Grant is going to go push. It's already at veterancy 2. And Odung now could potentially get the Black Prince out as well. Which would be super fun. Instead, it looks like he's going to get an, a second Grant out. Honestly, that makes... That makes more sense. Uh, I'd love to see how the Black Prince does with the uh, the changes to the AOE profile, but I think the Grant is better for crowd control against these Jaegers and Grenadiers. Now, Six Pounder is set up to potentially deal with uh, counter push from the Whirlwind. Oh, using the Reki artillery to find the Whirlwind. I actually really like this because the Whirlwind will shoot no matter where it is on the map. Artillery coming in on this infantry blob actually forces them closer to the infantry section. This is really good use of the recce artillery here. Oh, the retreat through the artillery. Wolverine's still working on the airplane. Meanwhile, a squad of grenadiers gets annihilated by a grant on the opposite flank. So now, yeah, this infantry mass here in the center, supported by a fresh grant to hit the field, is just going to run over this MG42. This is, you know, a G43 Jaeger squad. Oh man, MG42 just melted, and this Jaeger squad is at risk of going down as well. Hangover now holding. Oh my gosh, they just get smoked. And so Odon going to grab up the west side of the map. Jaeger squad with Shreks does decent damage to the Grand on the opposite side of the map. But Hangover's map presence down significantly. And now you can see he's waiting to get another Tiger out. He needs another 140 manpower. But he's going to run out of time here shortly. We have secured the location. The enemy have taken our territory. Now fortunately he's able to cap and get a second VP. So that'll take some of the pressure away. Here's the Werbelwing. He's got to be careful of getting... Yep, he's going to get snared. Infantry section drops a couple of models. Good infantry push and support. About 15 seconds away from the Tiger hitting the field. Probably 30 seconds from the Tiger getting to the fight here. Pioneers take a bunch of damage from the Grant. The other Grant on the side here getting repaired. Alright, Tiger's on the field. Black Prince is now available for Odung, but he's a long way away from a resource perspective unless he uh, refits one of these grants. Now, Grant caught slightly out of position. Six pounders are in place to challenge the Whirlwind. Whirlwind's going to try to drive past Ol, but it gets knocked out by a combination of the Grant and the Six Pounder. Infantry push, though, punishes one of the Six Pounders. Man, Hangover really needed that War of Wind to stay alive. Now, here comes the British infantry. Both the Six Pounders knocked out. But these Grants just doing a ton of damage to the Jaegers. Another squad goes down here. Tiger hits the field. This Gren squad also going to get knocked out. The mass of British infantry just too effective now in the late game. The Tiger here. And it backs up. Ooh. That main gun still hits really hard. They changed the the near damage multiplier in the kind of the center of the AOE to 0.6, but the main gun does 240 damage. So, you know, basic math here, that's about, oh my God, I'm doing math on the fly. It's still about 140 damage in the center of the, uh, the AOE, which means that it's still more than lethal against any infantry squad or infantry unit uh, that's in the center of the strike point. Another six pounder out. The tiger is going to pursue and try to knock it out, but he's got to be careful. Oh, especially now a single center. Black Prince hits the field, and the tiger's natural predator here. Oh, this is not looking good for a hangover at this point. Ooh. 
Black Prince takes a shot. Grant is pushing on the flank. Tiger's backing up. And that's going to be it. So it looks like Hangover threw in the towel. So in starting with the build order, I'm going to go with a Hangover first, the Axis player. Right, so he starts with his two Pioneers, gets his infantry company. He selects the breakthrough battle groups. You know he's going to play, at least initially, with a lot of Grenadiers. And he starts with three for attacking for the Tier 1 Officer's Quarters, which gives him that Vet 1. Then he gets a fourth Grenadier squad before he builds Tier 2 of the Luftwaffe Company. From there, he invests heavily into Jaegers. He gets two Jaeger squads, one with the Shrek and one with the G43 upgrade. Then he techs the support elements, which allows him to build the uh, Whirlwinds. You'll see two total there, in addition to two more Jaeger squads. Again, one with the G43 upgrade and one with the Shrek. Uh, I think the Panzer Shrek, the last, the fourth Jaeger squad, is a reaction to the Matilda hitting the field. Then, really what you see him do, he doesn't build his Tier 4. He uses, he spends his initial fuel, 70 each, on those Warble Winds, and then he saves the remainder of it for uh, essentially two Tigers. Builds one, it gets isolated and destroyed, builds a second, and when that one, he basically base dives with it, and that one gets knocked out, it ends the game for him. From a battle group point of view, obviously he unlocks MP40s for the Grenadiers. He goes for the breakthrough uh, capture, which he uses extensively through the game. And then on the opposite side, he gets a rapid production, the Blitzkrieg, and then unlocks the Tiger. Um, he doesn't unlock the uh, half track or the incendiary bombing. Um, obviously, he had the command points to do so, but I think at that point, he's more worried about getting the Tiger out. I do think in a couple of spots that incendiary bombing run could have been really helpful potentially in helping him keep that tiger alive uh, the first time he gets surrounded by the British infantry. And then for Odung here, he starts with his two sappers, gets his tier one out straight into three infantry sections. Then he goes for tier two and builds a Humber. Uh, you know, this is one of the light vehicles, had a slight nerf essentially in, in that it's more expensive for in terms of fuel, but actually damage increased uh, against snipers. So I think this is a good initial start if you're playing Brits versus Wehrmacht in this patch. Um, snipers did get nerfed slightly in that their cost went from 300 to 340, but pre 1.8, snipers were considered a good counter to the Brit style of play, especially very infantry heavy Brit play. So Humber, a Humber as a sniper counter, I think is smart. And then he uses this fairly effectively to kind of kite the Grenadiers and impose manpower costs uh, on Hangover. From here, he does actually a lot of teching. So first field infirmary makes a lot of sense. The Grenadiers have healing at uh, access to healing at Vet One. Uh, but he, his infantry don't unless he texts this infirmary. Uh, then he goes for the infantry training. All of his infantry come out at Vet 1 now. Just improves their overall survivability and helps them scale a little quicker. And then he texts into his heavy armor battle group. Uh, from here, he gets a 4th infantry section. Starts getting a six, uh, 6 pounders out. Gets a Vickers HMG. Um, I like this. It's just a little bit of crowd control. I know it doesn't suppress a ton, especially against like later game units for the Wehrmacht that take reduced suppression, but against the Grenadiers trying to spread him out across the map, I think it's a good answer and a recognition that he can't keep up just through infantry alone uh, with Hangover's very infantry heavy build. Then he gets into tier four, he gets a second uh, AT gun out. I think this is a reaction to the Whirlwinds hitting the field. His first tank is a Matilda. I think it's a smart choice. It's got enough health and enough armor to deal with just the one Jaeger Shrek squad. Does a lot of damage to infantry, um, and it's going to be very resistant to any pushes uh, by a whirlwind on it. Um, gets a fifth infantry section. At this point, most likely it's just he's floating some manpower, and that extra capping power and DPS against the uh, Vermont infantry is helpful. Um, then he unlocks uh, Grants, which I like this choice. I think it makes sense. You're going into the late game against Wehrmacht, and You've seen the MP40s, so you know the Tiger is coming. This is kind of the best option that you have. Um, he gets a grant out. He texts grenades. Um, probably could have done it sooner, but with five infantry sections on the field, that's a lot of utility. That's a lot of snares available. Uh, gets a second grant, and then right at the end of the game, gets the Black Prince, which seals the deal for him. Uh, on the battle group side, obviously you get the, uh, the Sapper upgrade, the Crusader AA. Really, it's just a stepping stone to the Black Prince there. And then uh, the withdraw and refit, the radio command net, which I didn't see him necessarily use. And then the recon artillery, which he used a couple of times. Uh, once in particular, really good effect on the west side of the map, basically forcing Hangover to advance his infantry forward to avoid the artillery into an engagement area that he wanted. So good use of the battle group there. And now as we get into the, the post-match review, so I'll start with Hangover a little bit. First off, I thought he did an excellent job uh, producing early game pressure 
Uh, really good use of the Grenadiers spreading out the map. I think it's a slight overinvestment, uh, just indicated by the fact that he ends up building four Jaegers. So now there's eight infantry squads to micro plus the two pioneers. And after the first 10 minutes of the game, really, as the infantry sections have infantry training, as they get their recce package, the Grens can't really deal with them. Um, and so now you're you're trying to micro a lot of things, but you've thrown away your ability to scale into the late game. Uh, so I think maybe a little bit of an overinvestment. Um, I would have potentially gone with like an MG42 or something for the crowd control that'll scale later and continue to help you. As you saw towards the end of the game, Odin was able to move around with this mass of infantry uh, and just knock down the Grenadiers and now you're just bleeding manpower. Um, but that early game control translated into really good fuel control, which he was able to use to get Werbles on the field uh, pretty early. So, and, and I like the Werble play. You can tell Hangover really knows what he's doing. Um, he's, he's used these units before, so he's moving them around, forcing retreats, doing some manpower damage, uh, but not getting them caught out. Uh, and it's actually a really smart, I think, build order in, in general, going from Werbles without a tier four straight into the Tiger. Uh, what I think though is if the game is going late against the Brits, they have such good heavy armor between the Matilda, the Grant, uh, and then eventually the Black Prince, um, you need some sort of additional AT. So maybe he could side tech uh, to tier three to get access to pack 40s. It also gives him access to the Naval Warfare, uh, which again, he doesn't have to do an extra tech for because he already has support elements. Um, or if he's worried about the recon already pushing those AT guns out of position, maybe you get a, a martyr or two to back up the Warbles. Um, you're more susceptible to the six pounders with that, but you're more resistant to the infantry sections uh, and to the recon already. So just a, a couple of choices there with some of the extra fuel that he had um, that might have been able to help him deal a little bit better with the late game Brit uh, vehicles and then let his Werbles kind of run free to handle the infantry sections. But really what I think this game ends up hinging on is that first Tiger getting isolated and knocked out by the Matilda, the Grant, and the infantry sections. I think if he doesn't overextend with that Tiger, he keeps it alive. He has the unit composition at this point and clearly the skill to take it the distance and force it you know, to be a down to the wire VP game. For Odung, um, first off, I thought he did a great job uh, staying in the game despite being on the back foot for most of the first part of the game, uh, being down uh, three to one on fuel uh, for getting you know, the first 200 VPs knocked out for free. Um, fortunately, what he was able to do, uh, and I think it's primarily micro and experience, the lack of map control that he had didn't translate into manpower bleed. So he eventually did get five infantry sections out. The fifth, I think, was just kind of a luxury pick. Like he's like, all right, I need more infantry or hangovers playing with a lot of infantry. This will be handy. Uh, and two AT guns. Um, you know, if you're really worried about the horrible wins, maybe a third AT gun sooner. Uh, but, you know, he could deal with hangovers infantry at that point. Uh, he eventually got a couple of good wipes on Grenadier squads. Um, so able to kind of stay focused in the late game, which can be really difficult. Um, and then he did a really good job of managing the pressure from the Werbles. Uh, with the AT guns, I, I mean, I would like to see maybe some more mines go up to kind of punish uh, overextension. But when you have a good player like Hangover who's not going to overextend with those, um, just being able to kind of make sure they can't run you down is also really important. So good job keeping his AT gun central um, and then spreading out the infantry and applying enough pressure to stay in the game and not bleed too much to those units. Um, overall for this, so a couple of things, uh, mainly from the patch and the changes the patch has had on the gameplay uh, in general. Sheer infantry, um, you know, infantry versus infantry fights, I think you're going to see that more. Right, light vehicles are more expensive, they're less effective. So you're going to start to see, I think, four and five mainline squad infantry builds going into the late game. This is fine in terms of like holding back the enemy, but it's not going to be decisive. Right, When you only have a handful of infantry squads on the field and you wipe one, it's a big deal. But when both sides are fielding, in this case, like five infantry squads on one side and eight on the other, you can burn down a bunch of models, you can do some manpower bleed, but you're not going to have the decisive impact that you think. So, and even then the squad wipes towards the end of the game were more uh, a symptom of the micro tax that happens when both sides have really large armies at the end of the game. I think keep that in mind. Uh, you need something else. You need artillery, you need anti-infantry vehicles. 
um, you need effects uh, to actually knock down the enemy's infantry and have, can kind of have a decisive engagement win. Um, this is why I think Relic buffed artillery going into this patch, and that should help with this, especially in team games you see it. Um, but neither battle group here really has access to that heavy artillery, and so both sides are forced to do it with vehicles. Um, I am a little concerned, I've said this a couple of times now, I feel like light vehicles are getting squeezed out because the timing for the heavier vehicles hasn't really been adjusted. And so you're gonna see really infantry heavy play. And then with all the tech choices that you gotta make to make that viable, you're not gonna get the fuel that you need to get a bunch of light vehicles out. Um, and then the timing for the heavy vehicles hasn't changed. So their spot in the meta is gonna be reduced. Um, this just may need some adjustment. I think if you just want to extend, rather than eliminate the light vehicle section of gameplay, um, just extend the overall you know length of the game in terms of uh, each phase of the meta. I like the tick rate. I think it keeps these games a little bit quicker and a little bit less uh, of a slugfest than Co2. Um, but right now, light vehicles really struggle to have a place. Um, you saw the one Humber, no Stewarts, uh, and I think you know Odung made good choices uh, along those lines. Uh, still, uh, one of the things that I see, like, and, and it might be that um, high-level players, like top 50 players, and they play someone in like the top 200, four or five Grenadier squads is helpful because the Grens are are good and getting better. The problem, though, is that they don't scale, right? This isn't Co2 where you can get an MG42 for them. They, their DPS doesn't scale. So um, overinvestment when the game goes long can be pretty punishing. Uh, and so four squads of Grens and then four squads of Jaegers. Um, it's just something that I think if you're playing Vermont, like keep that in mind. Maybe go for a little bit more of a diverse build with a mortar and MG42. And then if you need that late game infantry, have access to it. Jaegers, Panzer Grenadiers have been buffed like crazy. Uh, and then the Stoss Troop, and especially right now with the broken armor, they're all very good. So uh, I would say don't overinvest into the, uh, the Vermont Grenadiers. And then uh, the last thing is just kind of a thought. With more infantry on the field, fewer vehicles until later on the game, I think forward healing is going to be more and more valuable. So for both of these players, the, the CMP truck or the med half track, not just to recruit lost weapons, but to allow you to kind of soft retreat your units, heal them up on the battlefield and push them back out. Road to Tunis doesn't make this as punishing as some of the other maps because of kind of the layout of it. And, you know, a full retreat isn't that far away. Uh, but I think some of the other maps, stuff like um, Toronto Coastline or Fame and Full Approach or Pacino Stalemate, I think not having some sort of forward uh, healing or forward reinforcement capability could eventually swing the balance one way or the other. So keep that in mind going forward. Um, with all of that, I thought it was an excellent game. I'm glad I found this one. Uh, GG well played, both Hangover and Odung. Um, and that's all I got. I'll see you all in the next one.